Christian reality. We must avoid giving the impression that following Jesus Christ is an experience that is free from problems and difficulties. Here's Gene to explain. This particular psalm probably was written after the Jews, the remnant, returned from Babylonian captivity. They had been in captivity for 70 years. And they were beginning to come back to Jerusalem, back to the land that God had promised them. And with that in mind, if you look at the opening verses, I've called this the return. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Our mouths were filled with laughter then, and our tongues with shouts of joy. Now keep in mind, they'd been in bondage for 70 years. And they're coming back to that land back to, the, to Jerusalem, and they're rejoicing, and they're singing. And of course, this psalm really gives them a song that they can sing that is used over the years, the psalm of ascent, uh, as they're coming back to Jerusalem. But when they came back from captivity, they had challenges. And we read about this in the next few verses. Restore our fortunes, Lord. Like Water courses in the Negev. Those who sow in tears will reap with shouts of joy. When they came back from captivity, it was a mixed blessing in the sense that they were singing and they were happy to be home again, as it were, their homeland. But at the same time, they had enemies. At the same time, they had to uh, take care of the earth and they had to trust God for blessings in relationship to uh, food and clothing and all the things that they needed. And so in the process, God dis didn't just open the heavens and pour out all the things they needed, but at the same time, He blessed them and He helped them. And this was a fulfillment, you see, of the curse and the blessing. The curses that came because they disobeyed God in this case, taken into Babylonian captivity. The blessings because they once again obeyed God and God brought them back to the land. And it's important for us to understand that as you go into uh, Deuteronomy 28 and you see all these curses and blessings as it relates to the children of Israel. And here we have an illustration of that blessing as a result or following up the curse going into the Babylonian captivity. This song was written after they came back. So they're praising God for a restored blessing in the land. Now, under the New Covenant, we talk about the New Covenant, we're talking about the New Testament. And one of the things we need to understand is that God has never promised Christians prosperity. He has never promised that we would be free from persecution if we walk in His will. Rather, notice what Paul stated in 2 Timothy 3.12. He said, in fact, all those who want to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. This was the last letter, by the way, Paul wrote before he was beheaded by Nero. It's interesting that we live in a culture, in a society particularly in the Western world, we don't even understand that. Yes, we have minor persecutions. And we've all experienced that to a certain extent. But I've not experienced what I see happening in the world in some places. Literally, where churches are burned to the ground. Hundreds of them. Because of the enemies of Christianity. And there are many, many Christians that are suffering today, and more and more Christians are suffering. And probably that's going to continue to happen because of what we read in Scripture. So we have a very fortunate situation in our own lives. James spoke to this issue in the New Testament world because there was persecution of believing Jews that were scattered throughout the Roman world. This is what he wrote in verses 2 and 3 of chapter 1. Joy and trials, I've called this. 
Consider it a great joy, my brothers, sisters, whenever you experience various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And I, I just have to confess that I just don't really understand that. Because I've never really experienced it. Like some of my brothers and sisters have experienced it in biblical history and even to this day. But the encouraging part is that I see them in the midst of this, reports that we get that this verse is true and they're practicing it. And God's grace is there in their lives. And it's a wonderful, wonderful truth. Now, the thing that I want you to see here, and let me just repeat the principle. Let's take that principle to live by so we see the continuity that grows out of this Old Testament setting and New Testament setting. We must avoid giving the impression that following Jesus Christ is an experience that is free from problems and difficulties. And what I am saying here is that there are some who take the promises to Israel of all the blessings and say this is what God is going to do for you today if you follow Jesus Christ. And they don't present the whole concept of what happens as followers of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus said they hated me and they're going to hate you, ultimately. And that we see this happening among believers today. And what happens when we give people a false sense of what's going to happen when they become Christians? Well, they become Christians for the wrong motive. They become Christians because of what they can get out of it. But what happens when they don't get what they're promised? Material prosperity and the healing of all their sicknesses and so forth. Disillusionment. There are many people that lose their faith because they're taught this theology that's based on uh, these Old Testament promises to Israel. The other thing that has happened is that there are leaders who utilize this for manipulation and control over people. And so that's a sad commentary on what happens when we misinterpret the Word of God. I, I love Paul's model. Paul is, is so unusual, isn't he? When he wrote from that prison, this was his first imprisonment. And here was his perspective on being a Christian. He said, whether by life or by death, I rejoice and I put my trust in God. If I live, it's to be a blessing to others. If I die, that's far better because of the eternal promise that I have in Jesus Christ. The reflection and response question is, what are the dangers faced by believers who live in a society relatively free from persecution? Well, think about your own life as I try to think about my life. We've been relatively free from persecution. And one of the things we do is we see Scripture through our experience. God has blessed us in unusual ways, and so we misinterpret Scripture. Now, God is the author of all blessing. But it's not just because we're obedient and we're Christians. Because generally speaking, as we look at the Scriptures, Christians are persecuted because of their faith. I believe we live in a moment in history, which is a great blessing for us in the Western world, where we have this freedom. And the point is, let's never, ever take it for granted. Let's be dedicated Christians. So let me just repeat that principle to live by. We must avoid giving the impression that following Jesus Christ is an experience that is free from problems and difficulties. But let me just share a final thought that I put right in the Life Essential Study Bible in relationship to this principle. And it's simply this. However, no matter what our circumstances, God has promised to provide us with grace to be able to remain faithful. And furthermore, we can experience a supernatural, joyous, fulfillment regardless of our circumstances.